This video is introducing mixing tank system behavior and we're going to reinforce this through the use of a MATLAB app. And as ever, a reminder that if you want a slower and more detailed introduction and files, please look at this website here. Introduction to mixing then. So we're going to look at the mixing applications because this is very common in the process industry, bioengineering, drug administration and so forth. So we're going to consider a tank a bit like this one here. You can see we've got a flow coming into the tank with a flow rate F0 and a concentration CA0. And we've got a flow going out of the tank with a flow rate F1. The concentration in the tank is CA. The volume of the tank is V. And we're going to assume that the tank is well mixed. So our question is, how does the concentration in the tank that is CA, depend upon the parameters flow and volume. Let's do some first principles modelling before we continue. So first we're going to assume that the flow in and the flow out are both the same for convenience. We're going to assume that the tank is well mixed and so the outlet concentration is the same as the concentration in the tank. Now here's the modelling part. The rate of accumulation or loss of this um, chemical A in the tank is given by volume times DCA dt. And this must be equal to the difference between the amount of A coming into the system through flow F0 and the amount going out through flow F1. So you end up with a simple equation. V dc dA dt equals flow times concentration coming in minus flow times concentration going out. So what are the core questions we might want to ask? How do we expect the concentration to depend on the flow rate and the tank volume? You can see these two parameters appear in the equation, volume and flow. Do real simulations confirm what we expect? So it's important to think like an engineer, say what do I expect and why, even without this equation? We're going to use a MATLAB app to replicate the real system so you can get a feel for what the behaviour should be. Later, we'll confirm these expectations using some further mathematical analysis. Baseline expectations then. So if you had two tanks, you can see the one on the left here, which is small, and the one on the right, which is very big, and assume they have the same flow. What do you expect? Well, hopefully you would expect the concentration in the right hand tank, this large tank, to be much slower to change because it's got a lot more fluid in it so you need a lot more fluid to come through the inlet flow before you can make a significant change so that's going to take longer. So in other words if you've got a larger volume you expect a large time constant. More baseline expectations then. If you've got two tanks that have the same volume but different flows what do you expect? Well, probably you would expect the concentration to change much faster with a faster flow rate because the original fluid in the tank is going to display, get displaced much more quickly if you have a faster flow rate. So in other words, a bigger flow is likely to imply a smaller time constant. Final baseline expectations. What steady state gains you expect and why? Well, after a sufficiently long time, all the fluid that was originally in the tank will be displaced by the fluid coming in. So you would expect the concentration in the tank must ultimately come to the inlet concentration. In other words, the steady state gain will be one, irrespective of the volume and the flow rate. OK, then. so let's go to the MATLAB app and see whether these expectations are backed up in practice. So here's the app. So you can see we sent the tank volume to be 2, inlet concentration to be 0.4, and the initial concentration to be 0.1, flow rate 0.8. So let's run this and see what happens. And you can see very quickly the concentration goes from 0.1 to 0.4. So it settles, the, the eventual concentration settles at the inlet concentration as expected. Now let's make the tank a bit bigger. Let's go to 4. What happens now? What you can see is as the tank gets bigger, what's happened to this response? It's got slower. Let's make the tank go up to six 
and one assimilation. And what do you see? As the tankers got bigger, the time constants got slower, go up to eight. And you can see here, as the tank gets bigger, the change in concentration gets slower and slower and slower. And if you look in this bottom left hand figure, you can see here, all right, as the volume goes from two, four, six, eight, ten, what happens to the time constant? Two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten, twelve and a half. But the key thing is for all of these, you get the same steady state. All right, let's go down to something like six. We'll just leave it there for the tank volume. And now let's see what's the impact of flow rate. So we'll refresh and start again. So let's start with a flow rate of something like 0 0.2 and run the simulation. OK, so with a flow rate of 0 0.2, what can you see? Time constant of 30, quite slow. OK, 30 seconds isn't long enough to get the full response here. Now let's let the flow rate go up to 0 0.4 and run. So as I've increased the flow rate, what can you see? The time constant has got faster, but the steady state is the same. Let's get the flow rate up to 0 0.6. What do you see? The time constant is getting faster, but the steady state is not changing. The flow rate up to 0 0.8. The time constant is getting faster, the steady state is the same. And finally, we could take the flow rate up to 1 and you will see the same impact. OK, the one thing I haven't done here is messed around with the inlet concentration and the initial concentration. You could, of course, do that. So if I um, clean that and let's say the inlet concentration goes up to 0.5 and run it, you will see, unsurprisingly, now the tank concentration goes up to 0.5. OK, we'll go back to that in a minute. But a few more slides next. So some analytical observations. What have we noticed? The time constant is given as V over F. So it gets slower if you increase the volume and faster if you increase the flow rate. And that's what we noticed when we use this MATLAB app. The steady state gain is always unity. So the steady state value for CA always matched CA zero. And that's what you can see. When the derivative goes to zero, you end up with CA equals CA. So now let's look at some wider applications and interpretations. And we're going to look at reactions. What happens when the tank also includes a reaction so that some of the product A is consumed at a rate RCA, and that's moles per meter cubed per second? So a suitable model is going to take this form. And you'll see we've added this additional term here on the right hand side to show that some of um, A is being consumed. So that's going to reduce to a model a bit like this. And you can see the time constant is now faster because instead of V over F, I've got V over F plus RV. And ditto, the steady state is smaller because instead of a steady state of one, I've got F over F plus RV. So again, let's go back to this app and see, is that what we expect? So you'll notice this top slider says the absorption rate R and it's currently set at zero. So let's run that with the absorption rate of zero and you can see what time constant we've got and what gain we've got. So we've got a gain of 0.5, a time constant of six. So now let's increase the absorption rate to 0.02 and run the simulation. What do you notice? The steady state is smaller, but the time constant, look down here in this bottom left, the time constant is faster. Let's make the absorption rate bigger again and another simulation. What can you see? The steady state is smaller. The time constant is faster. Let's increase R some more from the simulation. And what do you see? The steady state is smaller and the time constant is faster. So let's move that out of the way and carry on. Other applications then, you could look at medicine. So what happens when someone is administering drugs into the bloodstream? And this is a very similar context, except now the drugs get absorbed or used up, a bit like the reaction in the previous example, but now there is no flow out. So a possible model takes this form, and you'll see it's pretty much the same model, except we've removed 
the flow out term. So now the model can be expressed as we have in the bottom. And here you'll see the time constant now depends solely on the absorption rate. And the steady state depends on flow, volume and absorption. But this is for private study and the app does not cover this context. So some conclusions. We focused on the behaviour of a mixing tank with a constant inflow and outflow, and indeed with a reaction. We briefly introduced the mathematical modelling, and we've used a MATLAB app to demonstrate how behaviour changes as the volume, flow rate and reaction rate change.